Good evening, friends. Stephen Benin here with Israeli News Live. And you're looking at my mother-in-law and father-in-law on the screen here beside me right now, Irina and Stefan Suto. I never got the privilege of meeting my mother-in-law because she had passed away before I had that privilege. But I've heard so much about her in the years I've been married to my wife. But the one I had the privilege of not only getting to know, but being with, living with day to day, who lived with us was my father-in-law, Stefan Sutro. I have said, even while he was here with us, on many, many occasions when I would talk about my father-in-law, that you could have never asked for a better father-in-law in all the world than this man right here. He lived a life that was so exemplary. His caring, his compassion, his love for others, his love for animals, his selfless, if that's the right word to call it, in other words, he was not self selfish, he was he gave of himself in every way you could ever possibly imagine. He raised our children. He was a part of their life, very intimately involved, loving them, caring for them, nurturing them, cooking for them. This man gave everything to both Ethan and Ariella. There's not enough words that I could ever express to you about this man that would do justice. He was very poor. He'd come from Eastern Europe. He was actually an officer in the Czechoslovakia uh, Air Force back when my wife was a girl. And even though Czechoslovakia was under a communist rule and was considered to be an enemy of the United States, I have heard the story of how that when he believed that Jesus was the Messiah, how he had to stand before a court-martial because he refused to fight against the United States of America. He had a respect for the freedom of religion that our country had stood for so valiantly over the years. I heard about how that the very judge in his trial was his best friend as children. How it grieved the judge to have to sentence him. But he had asked him one last time, will you serve as a soldier in the arm or in the Air Force, in the military? My wife told me how her father held up a Bible and he and he took that Bible and rotated around the court. He said, I am a soldier. I am a soldier of Jesus Christ. He said, and that's who I will fight for. And he got sentenced as a political prisoner because he would not battle against this country, the United States of America. When my wife came here, her parents followed not long after that. He loved this country with all of his heart, wanted to be a citizen. Ethan, his grandson, was going to, or actually was beginning to work to get his citizenship for him because he knew how much his grandfather wanted to be a citizen. As my wife became a citizen and has loved this country, and the freedom that it once stood for. And I have to say once because we see that fascism is ravishing our country. 
But as I said to you, he had a great love for animals. What you're looking at now are some little baby chicks that were hatched earlier this year. Um, a friend of mine was going to send me some pictures of the chickens that he really, really loves. That is actually the mother and father of these little chicks right here. But they were down in the woods this afternoon, so they weren't able to ca capture a picture of that. But those are the babies. He had one. He's got. We have a rooster. We call him Ossie. My father called uh, called him Yanchi. It's like John, calling him John. That rooster is one of the meanest roosters you ever would meet, but my father-in-law could pick him up like a little cat and could love him and pet him. And that rooster just loved my father-in-law. Waffle, as you see right here, is our cat. He's got a little broke tail, fattest cat you'd ever want to see, but that cat loved my father-in-law more than you could imagine. He slept with him every night. And when we were here in Florida and he felt that he wasn't going to be here much longer, he kept pleading with me to take him home. He wanted to be with the animals that he loved in Tennessee. He ran a three-acre garden at the age of 80 years old was born July the 8th, 1941. But he was very fit man, very good condition, very strong heart, as Jim, a good friend of ours who's a doctor here said, he said he's an amazingly strong man. In fact, he cared for him and didn't charge him a dime. He only said to my father-in-law, you have to teach me how to garden. I remember my father-in-law waking up one morning here when my wife came down. And he said, where is that young doctor that prays for me? Jim would come in to see him as a friend of the family. and He would kneel down beside his bed and take a hold of his feet. And with tears in his eyes, we pray for my father. He was an example of love that you rarely ever see. Kiwi, that little doggy there sitting on the corner of the rug there, is my daughter's dog, actually. And that dog is split with her love between my daughter and between my father in law. Every night, I have to open the door so she can go to my daughter and sleep with my daughter for a little while. And then she goes back to sleep with Grandpa. Back and forth. It's kind of like just going back and forth constantly. This, of course, is when he was young. and He married Irina, my mother's wife. My, excuse me, my, my, my wife's mother. And he is a very handsome, blonde-headed young man beautiful blue eyes, and they were a beautiful couple together, and my wife was their daughter. Also, Monica, my wife's sister, who is also grieving tremendously tonight, as our family also is grieving tremendously. My daughter took this picture here. Now, this is when we were still in Florida. About, oh, let's say about a year and a half, maybe two years ago. And, of course, Kiwi again liked to be held like a baby. We called my father-in-law Ditto, which means grandfather in the Slovak language. And everybody called him Ditto. It's just funny. Everybody actually would think in America this was his name. Our neighbors, your name. Everybody just called him Ditto, Grandpa. Here we have Cookie and Waffle again. Now, of course, Cookie, she would always come to Daddy, or to me. She, she loved me, and Waffle, of course, loved my father. Let's see here. I know, oh, that's right. I have some, that's just the pictures I had for right now. 
as I said to you, he was a very poor man. He lived on Social Security. I think it's 500 a month. 200 of that had to go towards his Medicare. And we didn't do that, but I think about the last year of his life. So basically, he only had lived on $300 a month. He had no life insurance or anything. And, but we want him to have the very best. Because he gave his best to everyone. And, uh, if the Lord happens to lay on your heart to help us with this in giving him an honorable burial with his wife, he's buried here in Pensacola, Florida. We would certainly greatly thank you for that. Our website, of course, is org. Donating online might be a little bit better. In this case here, if you're able to, the top of the website on the right-hand side, you can do that. Um, but if you need to do it by mail, you can do that as well. But what I want to say, there, there's the, you can see, you can just click online. There's no way I can express to you what my wife is suffering and the children are suffering and what they've gone through with the loss of this great man. And although his legacy may be simple, it'll never be forgotten. And I feel like he had more years here to be with us. The message I did, called Under Attack, is still loading right now, has a lot to do with what I feel in my heart has happened to our family. I don't think it really was his time. I think the enemy was just trying to take and bring harm to our family. They also tried to take my wife out and was nearly successful. Had it not been for a very precious sister, Gwendolyn, and her husband, Seho, that were kind enough to go check on my wife and to bring her and Ethan down here to Florida where they could be cared for properly. And recover. I don't really know what else to say. It's kind of like a lost words right now. We love you guys greatly. And I know there's a tremendous amount of work to do because I realize that it is the enemy that wants a silent. But we will not be silent. I promise you that. In fact, if anything, I will be more dedicated in making sure you know the truth of what's going on in this world. And I trust that what we do do is a blessing to you. I will be updating you if you live in the area here and you want to come um, I know he, the Faith Chapel Funeral Home in Cantonment, Florida, is where the services will be held. And not far from there is where his lovely wife, my mother-in-law, is buried. And we will lay him to rest with her. So, our family thanks you for your kindness, for your love from the depth of our heart. God bless you. In the name of Jesus Christ. And may you have a very blessed holiday. Good evening.